Good evening, friends. Stephen Benoon here with Israeli News Live. And I uh, wanted to share with you guys real quick before we get started. We're going to be looking at some of these mushroom clouds going off over in Ukraine. Uh, two in particular, one we've already seen already. Uh, that was, let's see, not this one, I don't believe. But uh, here, we, no, not that one either. That's a... Uh, where did that rascal go? I've got it. I thought I had it up here somewhere. Uh, that was. Oh, goodness. All right. Well, we're going to have to look at it here in just a moment there. What what, what I will say here, though, is that uh, we have several different uh, scenarios here where it appears that, you know, Russia may be using um, tactical nukes inside of Ukraine. And uh, ooh, that video there, I remember that one that came out there. This is really bad. The march going on in Israel right now. Uh, if you can stomach some of the bad language, <laughs> listen to this here. This Get the moment. fuck out from our country! Here! Get the fuck out of the country! This is Jewish country only! We don't need Muslims here! This was going on in the in the uh, march all day long in Israel. Uh, we have seen just tons of those types of responses there. Very sad. Um, you know, I know it doesn't express all the sentiments of Israelis uh, by no means, but uh, but it does express a lot of sentiment. And uh, and that's kind of what I wanted to talk about anyway here, uh, because the situation. Um, I feel like. Uh, here we go. That's the video I was looking for right there. Is uh, when you look at the way this thing strikes that, and then the mushroom cloud, cloud, and they get two different ones of these here. It appears that Russia may very well be using tactical nukes uh, in the country there uh, to destroy, especially these depleted uranium uh, shell depots there. Because you wouldn't know much difference on the radi radiation levels as a result of that. Uh, in fact, the wind direction of these explosions that have gone over there are actually going from Ukraine and looping back around into Germany. Something that uh, the, this particular website here was pointing out as well. I bring this up though, and the reason I'm doing this is because much like what as happening in Ukraine right now, uh, and then also with all the fake news that comes out of Ukraine, is to build Western sympathy in order to send in more weapons, more ammo, and create a bigger war. And with that happening there, I think we're about to see the same thing take place in Israel. And uh, and I have a strong suspicion that that some of those elite figures in Israel are working with Iranians to actually launch that attack. The president of Iran, by the way, was just meeting with Bashar al-Assad in Syria. Uh, so it appears that everything is on board. We've had Putin uh, talk about a new world order, that we need a new world order with a just set of laws. I thought that was very interesting in his verbiage there, especially in light of the Noahide laws. And they're often called a just set of laws for the nations. Uh, now we have Iran calling for a new world order. So are they really more complicit together to bring about the rise and fall of nations in order to get this new world order? And they really are all just working together in the first place. I said that about even with Russia and Ukraine from the very outset. Uh, and now we see all these tensions and all this bitterness and hatred between both sides on every every side you can look at whether it be in Israel Palestinians Israelis whether you see it uh, you know uh, in Ukraine Ukrainians against Ukrainians West versus East uh, you know it's just really getting getting bad uh, and even the situation over in with Taiwan uh, Taiwan's another big issue uh, there's no nobody there to, to even go up against the Chinese to, to help save the Taiwanese. Just not going to happen. So, you know, I might even include, I think what I'll include here on this video here, I'm going to include the excerpt I did with Bonnie on uh, Hebrew Nation Radio there. It's a audio only, but I'd like for you to listen in some of the points that I bring out on these things here. 
uh, with Bonnie there for about 30 minutes. Get your take on it. Get your thoughts on it. Because I feel like this is where we're headed right now. It's a setup. It's a setup for a new world order. And uh, we're being played. Uh, also, too, those of you that are on our Patreon channel, uh, we just uh, uploaded this video earlier today about Ted Bundy. The untold story, or facts of Ted Bundy's story never told is what I named it over there. Uh, I think you'll find this a very interesting 30-minute uh, broadcast there. Uh, my family indirectly connected on multiple levels. My uncle was an investigator, uh, did some of the investigative work on Ted Bundy. Uh, Norman Chapman, the investigating officer for the Pensacola PD, was actually my professor uh, in criminology back in 1983. So I learned a lot from him. Uh, Three-letter agency that I was working with back from 83 to 91. Learned a lot about what the real story was about him. That's the untold part that I share on there. And even my aunt, uh, my Aunt Debbie, was would have been his last victim. I'll show you the map layout and everything where Ted was first spotted at. Uh, she had seen him the day before in his Volkswagen. Uh, and then, of course, uh, he tried to pick her up uh, the after very afternoon or the very night when he was caught earlier that afternoon. He was trying to pick up my aunt, who at the time, I think it was about 23 years old, blonde headed girl, very beautiful woman. And uh, Mr. Bundy was trying to pick her up anyway. So I share a lot of the details there on Patreon. So I'll leave a link bef below for you if you'd like to check that out. And we'd like to thank you for your support and your kindness for this broadcast. This weekend, we'll be sharing a lot more information back up here in Northwest Florida right now, um, dealing with some issues uh, surrounding the case of my father-in-law. And that's more and more going to become very well known in the not-so-distant future. So we thank you and your support in helping us to, to bring these things out is critical, and we definitely need your help. And thank you for your help as well. God bless. Alrighty, welcome back everyone to the second half with me is Stephen. Welcome to the show, Stephen. Thank you, Bonnie, and good to be back and see everybody. Well, I can't see you guys, but you can hear us. Let's put it that way. Yeah, there you go. Well, we'll call that seeing for the moment. Yes. Best we can do. Well, you know, uh, we were chatting a bit before the show, and I, I said I went over Ukraine and the invitation to Israel. You had some really interesting comments on um, Israel and Iran, the United States here. Uh, tell me that. Yeah, the, the thing is on, on that issue there, and this is more just an observation, speculation maybe, but... You know, Bonnie, as I'm watching the whole situation unfold, um, Putin, for example, made a very interesting statement a, a couple of weeks back about uh, the New World Order. In fact, I think we may have even mentioned it in one of the recent broadcasts where he actually comes out and says, we need a New World Order with a just set of laws. Now, why that's so interesting is because most people that I know of uh, in the intelligence community have always said that Putin is against the New World Order. Uh, yeah. in, in fact, I remember talking to Vanessa Bealey. Uh, she's a British journalist that does, of course, she has a lot of anti-Israel stuff. She's not for Israel at all, so... Uh, I, I'm not like that. I'm, I'm just against the elite that are trying to destroy the people that are there uh, and could care less about true Israelis. But uh, but Vanessa, I asked her because I knew that she knew uh, she knew Bashar al-Assad personally. I knew she knew, uh, you know, the president of Syria. And I knew that she knew Maria Zakharova, who is the um, uh, I think I don't know if Maria Zakharova is considered the spokeswoman for. Uh, no, she's not the spokesman for Russia. I'll pull her up real quick so I can say exactly what her position is. But she knew several people uh, that are in key positions in the Russian government. Uh, and I asked her one time uh, specifically uh, about uh, Putin. And this has been some years ago. Uh, and I was wanting to know if... Putin was actually, um, if he was for the New World Order or against the New World Order. 
And, uh, and of course, I got an interesting response about that from Vanessa Bealey. She said, you know, Steve, she said, I know Maria Zakharova. In fact, she was actually going there to, to interview Maria uh, in Russia. And she said, uh, and she said, I know several other the diplomats over there uh, are, are those that are in uh, Putin's administration. And, and she told me, she said, you know, I can tell you that that they are all against the new world order. And she said, I know this personally, uh, like with uh, uh, Maria and with uh, the foreign minister uh, of, uh, of Russia as well, uh, Lavrov. She said, I know they're all against the new world order. She said, all except Putin. She well, said, I'm not sure if he really is against it or not. Yeah. And that kind of stuck in my mind. I never have yeah. forgotten it since that was said. Mm-hmm. And uh, and so, and then now, I just uh, saw that, uh, that recently, that uh, now they're saying that uh, uh, Iran is now calling for the New World Order. And... That is surprising. Now, at the same time, if you look at Iran, if you look at, of course, Russia, we have the BRICS nations. We have the, uh, and one of the one of the, uh, there, there's a guy you guys could look up. His name is Ethan Kingsley on Twitter, an amazing economist. He's been Bonnie. The guy has been point spot on in some of the things that he tweets on the on the global economy. Like every time you turn around, he's like spot on. And I, and I forget how he's got thousands of followers. Uh, I do know Ethan and uh, I've been able to ask him several times about these things here. And he's always been very conservative about when collapse would come, things like that. Whereas most people, you know, even Steve Quell, and I know Steve, but Steve will say, oh, it's going to, it's happening here. Doesn't happen. Take your money out of the banks. Doesn't happen. I mean, how many people have been scared to death listening to Steve Quell? And, uh, and I'm not here just to beat up on the guy, but, you know, I don't like to cause people a bunch of nerves. But the, the point I'm trying to get to here is that Ethan is really to the point now that he feels like they're getting ready to really try to bring about the new world order and go to the cashless currency. And even though there's a lot of people saying it's going to happen in July, he still feels like they're not ready for it it'll still be a little further down the road before that happens. So I always appreciate that type of analysis, and I'm sure many people do, because everybody's scared to death of what's going to happen next. Um, But that being stated, he does believe that the BRICS is, like myself, the New World Order framework, Mm -hmm. and that you're seeing Egypt, Saudi Arabia, all these other nations are going into this. And with that happening, there's what a lot of people don't realize there are factions within the Israeli government that are very supportive also of the BRICS nations and this new world order, new economic system that would replace the the hegemony of the dollar. Um, And as a result of that, I feel like that those that are, when I say in power, Bonnie, I don't even know if I could say it's Netanyahu, although I'm sure he is probably far more aware than most prime ministers of Israel. But I believe people that are even higher up than what a prime minister would be in Israel are the ones pulling the strings. And I think yes. that they're cooperating with Iran to do a strike on Israel. Wow. Um, and... Uh, and, and here's uh, there's several reasons why I make that uh, assertion, and I and I don't say it as a doctrine. I don't say it as a, a guarantee that that is really a hundred percent true. But I'm looking at it based on so much information that, that's out there. Right? For example, one, Netanyahu did the drumbeat of war to go to war with uh, Iraq saying they had weapons of mass destruction uh, and he was the he was the cheerleader 
Uh, they had yellow cake. Uh, you know, they, they had everything they needed to make a nuclear bomb. And they had chemical weapons and all this. And, and this was at the drumbeat of war against uh, Iraq. When allegedly 9/11, uh, he was we were going to go to war with him because of 9/11. Yet it was all Saudi nationals uh, allegedly on these planes that struck the twin towers, Pentagon, etc. And I say allegedly because there's a lot to be said there, and we'll leave that out for now. But in the long run, why it never made sense? Why would you go to war with a country that has nothing to do with the downing of the twin towers? I guess we blame them harboring Osama bin Laden, which they were not. And we knew this. But now the drum beats have been over Iran for a long time. And it's always because we can't have them getting a hold of nuclear weapons. When anybody that knows anything about uh, uh, Obama's administration, I'm sorry, I mean Obama, uh, that he actually sold Iran tactical nuclear weapons. I mean, that's not even a mystery. But even before that, everyone in the intel community, I don't care if it's Israel, U.S., everybody that I know, knows that Iran has nuclear weapons. We've always known it. Uh, yeah, good... they keep, you know, oh, they're going to get nuclear weapons. They're going, I mean, what is that for... Uh, you know, civilian consumption. It is. You know, Bonnie, it's just like Ukraine. I had a I had a two hour meeting with a Ukrainian recently, and we were discussing how the war got started, and just to kind of compare it to Israel, not to go into that long uh, drawn out issue there as of right now, but he mentioned to me. And, and he is a Western Ukrainian. Uh, he's not East. He's, uh, he's not pro-Russian. Uh, but at the same token, as a believer, he is very, very concerned that there was never a peace process all, all the way going back to the Maidan coup. In fact, he said they put, they appointed as the president of Ukraine uh, a Baptist minister, not just a Baptist minister, but he said, but he was a head of the entire Baptist convention of Ukraine. He said, they never one time tried to do peace. In fact, he said, when Russia, he said, this is, we're going back to 2014 after Poroshenko, uh, excuse me, uh, uh, yeah, Poroshenko was, was driven out of office. And, and I asked him, was Poroshenko a good guy? He says, you know, he says, look, he says, Steve, he says, he was greedy, but he said life was better under him. Uh, he said than what we have now. And he said, or even with any of these other guys that they put in after the Maidan coup, he said, but he was greedy. He did want to run businesses. And he said, and a lot of people in the West did not like him as a result of that. Um, but he said, when Russia did the invasion, he said, and the Russians, when we, they got to Kiev, he said, they never tell you guys the truth in the media. He said, Putin had us surrounded. He said, we were about to fall. He said, at the same time, Putin is in negotiations for peace with Zelensky. Now, Israeli uh, Prime Minister Benjamin Naftali, uh, Benjamin, uh, excuse me, Naftali Bennett uh, was overseeing that meeting, those negotiations for peace, and they actually had agreed to a peace plan. Russia was going to back up to the pre-war uh, border. Uh, and that uh, they would bring about a lasting peace. But they would give the autonomy to Luhansk or the whole Donbass region, I should say. And everything was going along smoothly. Zelensky agreed to everything. And, then, and I used to think that it was the U.S., but I got corrected on that by the friend of mine there in Ukraine. He said no, and I was able to confirm that it is true. He, what he said was true. Boris Johnson was the one that came in and said there will be no peace agreement made. You will continue to fight Russia. Now think about that for a moment in light of the fact of well, who Boris, became the I mean, king. Yeah, right? what, what, 
yeah, that that so, that's a head scratcher. Right. So since when does Boris Johnson have so much wielding power? Well, the funny yeah. thing is, I have been told for quite some time from people in, in Washington that Putin has always known the only way to defeat the West is to take down the United Kingdom because he said they're the ones that truly control yeah. NATO in the world. And so that did kind of go along with what he said there. And then, of course, we see uh, Charles becoming the king of England and, and demanding the whole world to swear allegiance to him. That being that, said, though, here's that, what. Yeah, here's, uh, that's kind of spooky. Yes, very much. Uh, but here's what happened with Kiev. Putin had his uh, troops withdraw on the 31st. I think it was the 31st of, uh, what was that? Oh gosh, when January, February, March. Yeah, March. 31st of March. Uh, and on the 2nd of the, of April, this is when they began doing the filming of the dead bodies in the street and then blaming Russia for uh, raping underage girls, the soldiers. The journalist that helped write those stories that became so popular in Western media later was proven that it was all falsified information. She even went so far because not only were they uh, somebody that caught her and, and but she was doing it for some very high hands in the government, falsifying the stories intentionally to gain Western support to back sending weapons to Ukraine and to make Russia look bad and of course to, and that's how that was to be done. Uh, later, she comes out and confesses, or, or in, in her anger, she said, I wrote these stories because you wanted me to. And, you know, but yet they're trying to drag her under the bus, you know. Uh, and, you know, it was like the Ukrainians had caught her, so to speak, you know. But it was, the damage had already been done. The Russians were already made to look bad. That's the reason I bring that up is because the same thing with Israel and Iran. If they can make the Iranians look bad um, and Israel can have them attack the country uh, and end up using some very powerful weapons to do so and fulfill what the Talmudists are wanting in Israel, and that is six million more dead to fulfill their prof Talmudic, that's Talmudic prophecy, not biblical prophecy then they have, they've gained a great success. And I think that's what's coming, Bonnie. I think that they're, they're doing this intentionally. Most Jewish people have no clue to this. And, and even look at what's going on right now. They're, the Israeli government has got the people so riled up. Even the, the National Flag Day, and I know good and well, majority of the Jewish people that participated in, the, in these, these marches in Israel did not even come close to what we see in so many videos that are posting online right now where uh, some of the flag toters are, are going through the streets screaming death to the Arabs, death to the Palestinians, get out of our land, uh, stuff like that. Uh, because for the most part, Israelis just want to have peace. Yeah. And live in peace, uh, and even even those that are Orthodox, but will say they're you know not just Orthodox. You've got you've got Hasidic Jews uh, that'll stand out there and hold signs that say we are anti-Zionist. You know they're not against Israel, they're not against their people, but they they know that the Zionists are the ones that are going to bring about the deaths of the of the people in the in the first place. And so I see that's the trend that they're trying to make. And it will also facilitate bringing about the new world order because at the end of the day, if Israel is attacked, they will gain, they will garner world sympathy like never before. And then they would actually get exactly what they're wanting to get out of this. And that is the new world order. And then they could really push what even Israel, when they say the Noahide laws, they call it a just set of laws. The same verbiage 
that Vladimir Putin said in an address on national television when he uh, spoke recently about the Ukraine conflict. And he said, we need a new world order with a just set of laws. I think that's where we're headed, Bonnie. And I'm afraid that that's going to catch a lot of people off guard. Um, and, you know, one of the other things that, that too, that, that I saw that's happening in Ukraine that really is a great concern. Uh, and this could be for two purposes. And I'm sure you saw this already as well, Bonnie. You know, we had a couple of days ago uh, in western Ukraine where Russia targeted the um, weapons depot with yes. two massive explosions. Now, the explosions they're claiming is coming from uh, the, the ordinances that were held in there. But we're already getting feedback that the, that the uh, fallout uh, from those explosions, of course, is radioactive. And they're claiming that this is from uh, the, the, the munitions that, uh, that is uh, from the stockpile of depleted uranium shells that were for the tanks. Um, I have a hard time. I mean, I do realize they put out uh, gamma radiation. Uh, I, I realize that. But that's when you can use a tactical nuke and nobody would know. Not well, to mention we're getting hit by on the earth with radiation levels. We're in a peak right now. Uh, I think till the end of this month, very high radiation peaks coming in from the sun. And if they're ever going to use nukes, this is the time for them to do it. But then we had another one go off. There were two there. We had another one go off. And again, it produced a mushroom cloud. And... The last I've seen on this one here, they just simply, they show the video of it. It's an explosion in Ukraine. Location is yet unknown. However, it appears that, that more overseas gifts uh, to the AFU are being lifted up into the air with little help from Russia. So, um, I don't know, but I don't know what to think of it. I, I just realized that this war is about to get, I think, much worse in Ukraine. Even though they're talking about peace and welcoming every kind of peace negotiation possible. You know, Bonnie, I'd like to get your thought on that. But I, it is, to me, it is not looking good. That's just what I said. You know, I encourage people to just get in their group and, and, and you know, essentially you know, prepare for anything and just uh, stiffen our backbones for the cause. Uh, I mean, if Esther can go out and say, if I perish, I perish. I mean, we're going to be called upon to be the harvesters. And that's exactly why Satan wants to do away with the Western Christians. I mean, a lot of them, especially the Messianics, understand what's going to happen. And I, I, like you, I mean... It is to the point, as you say, Stephen, that the radiation coming from Ukraine is so great that the EU has turned off their public meters that is commonly uh, available, I assume, on Internet, on EU Internet, of the radiation in the country. So unless they have handheld devices, they won't know. Yes, exactly. And, uh, and and we did have one reporter. I just seen one of the films uh, much closer up, and they he actually reported saying that he shows the hypersonic missile hitting that target, and he actually says it was the equivalency of a tactical nuke striking. Yeah. So it, it, these are the Kinsall uh, missiles. Can they be? Do they can they carry nuclear payloads? As far as I know, yes. Um, okay. You know they could easily carry a tactical nuke, and and I don't know that officially, uh, but uh, I can actually see real quick even while we're talking here. 
um, and the 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 um, the the other thing is too is the West is claiming that uh, that we are actually shooting down the hypersonic missiles that Russia has. And Bonnie, that's just laughable. That's laughable. That's uh, laughable. <laughs> they show a missile, and Russia was very quick to, to point out that it was completely false. Uh, that there was no, you know, that it, you know, that they definitely did not have the right missile, and you could clearly see it was not shaped the same. Similar, it's a similar. And they show which missile they that they're actually showing on there. Um, but, uh, you know, Russia, uh, I think yesterday shot six of those in there, taking out the Patriot battery systems yeah. that, 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 that they're using. Yep. And, and they're basically, they, they realize Ukraine with, with basically NATO is one that's doing all of this heavy um, strikes on Russia and kind of uh, pause there for a little bit. But uh, at the same time, Russia realizes that with it being NATO doing all of these uh, strikes, they've got to rapidly do something uh, in order to stop any momentum that yes. Ukraine may end up gaining in this war. Yes, and, and they don't, I mean, the West does not say, okay, we're, into, we're in a foreign sovereign land here, what are we doing? They just keep upping the ante, like France now uh, has agreed to send in long-range missiles. Yes. I, I mean, long-range means hitting Russian land. And, Russian and the British have already done it. The British have already sent in their uh, long-range yes. bullet. I wouldn't say super long-range, but still ballistic missiles that could go deeper into the territory. And they've used those in Luhansk already on two occasions that I'm aware of. And I think that's one of the reasons why uh, uh, Russia is stepping up using the hypersonic missiles at this point here. Yes. Uh, is to be able to uh, counter that offensive that they're dealing with right now uh, because it, it is just really, really a bad situation. Really bad. And then uh, today Ukraine is, is, is threatening a huge um, response to the uh, Kinsol missiles. So, I mean, it's, it's not going to, you're going to that aisle up the ante. You did that aisle up that ante. I mean, Nobody is going to quit here. They're going to take us into World War Three. Yes, without without a doubt, Bonnie. Without a doubt, that's right where we're headed at, and I think that's what these world leaders want. Yes, uh, they yes, really yes. want to see that that type of uh, war, and uh, yes, you know, they, so. especially a war that takes out the West and depletes the West of all reserve uh, armaments. Exactly. And uh, uh, there also, there is, there is talk that Poland is about to get involved in this war, which is kind of interesting in my opinion, because I think Poland was already involved. Yeah. Uh, you know. With their NATO bases. Yes. So uh, with, with these things popping yeah. around uh, mm -hmm. and there being and, and, and it is being believed that Putin is using tactical nukes. In fact, I did find another video where we have two more bombs going off wow. uh, and they both appear to be tactical nukes. And, you know, I mean, Putin did warn that he would use tactical nukes in the event that uh, Ukraine um, ended up using any of these depleted uranium shells in their tanks yes, pointed did. towards Russian soldiers. He warned. He warned. We're out of time, Steve.